be sure to ask me about glide webs because I've got a good story about glide webs. Okay. We could do a whole basement tour though here, right? <laughs> oh, do you want to see this basement? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Here's a couple old skis. I don't know when they use these. Some of these are Tim's. Fisher, do you remember when they use those? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Ski long? Come on. Okay. Careful, my potatoes. Jeez. Fantastic. Knice, all these were like, these were, uh, weren't they some of the first fiberglass ones? Could be. Those, I think those belong to uh, Judy Rubinowitz. All right. Here's a neat vest. You've seen these, these Fisher vests. That's really cool. Oh, those are, that's yeah, that's one, nice. One of the originals. They're nice. Yeah. So, yeah, you got quite a collection here. The uh, blouse wax coat shit. 1982 with the yep. um, World Championships, and I was also the importer of Rex Wax, so I got over there, I got these cases and cases of Rex Wax, bought a lot of, of uh, Rhoda, and of course Swix, and Swix, I got to meet the Swix rep, Leif Torgerson, he died just recently, but I got in good with him, and so I could get extra wax from him whenever I wanted it. We used one special wax almost every day from Swix, hard wax. They didn't have much snow, and um, they set tracks every day, and you'd <gasps> blow on the tracks, and the snow would disintegrate. It was all oh, mealy really? and round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this wax, the, that was the best wax that I could find. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. No, nah, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> A roadie touring wax is zero to minus 25. That might work, because it's a hell of a range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Monteranta. You don't, you don't want to get rid of that, do you? Oh, no. In 72, at the uh, Sapporo Olympics, I think the Finns and the Americans were the only guys that had this wax. And uh, it's amazing. The snow temperature felt kind of moist. You know, the, the clouds, of, <laughs> clouds of pollution would come over from Russia, blow over the Sea of Japan. And we'd go skiing. We'd come in. The skis were black. with They, they yeah. picked up all the soot. But... This Monteranta, I use it almost every day. That's when we wax the whole ski, yep. you know, with glide yeah, yeah. wax or kick wax, yep. kick wax. So I use this almost every day. And I go out with the foreigners. We'd ski down a hill and see how far out we'd glide. I won every wax race. <laughs> I, well, I could ride a good ski, and I had, you know. But Monteranta, every every race, practically, the snow temperature was minus, believe it or not, minus 15 to 20 Celsius. Very cold snow. Really? Yeah, but it was moist too at the yeah. same time. Yeah. But this worked great. That was great. <laughs> you see anything you want. Yeah, like it. yeah. Hey, did these Rex clisters all kick? I had some old ones that got really hard in the tube, but that universal feels good. Yeah. You know, it turned solid. Yeah, you I You ever know. see that? Yeah, not too often with the Rex. You won't find much Rex there because that's, I still think it's the oh. best clister. Jesus, Rex look at so. this violet. Yeah, violet, sure. I love Rex violet. Rex violet's, uh, that's pretty hard. It's, it's tough, tough stuff. It's really fast. fast. Yeah. Really yeah. fast. It's yeah. a really strong yeah. cluster. Yeah. And the Rex Blue, of course. Oh, man. Rex Blue is a great tough, kicking cluster. That's, yeah, that's I like kicks it. and yeah. it's uh, hard. Yeah. And so you can use it for a binder, too, if you want. Yeah. Oh, I, the, the Glide Wax. Yeah. yeah at, tell at me about 82, yeah. Uh, we were putting on Glide Wax tips and tails. And for the 30K, our first race, Koki took a third. And, uh, I used fall line. Remember that fall line? You yeah. Ryan? Fall line yeah, alpine sure. wax. So we yeah. put that tip, fall line blue, I remember. Yeah. Uh, tips and tails, and uh, just before the race, I was a wax coach, so just before the race, Koki was out there warming up. He said, I need a little more kick. So he kicks, he shows his, the, the guys wax their own skis then. I couldn't wax. I was the only wax coach. I couldn't wax four pairs of skis and get them ready in time. So uh, Koki kicks his ski up, and he said, put a little right here. Well, he's kick pocket is about this big. See, so I said, fine, put it in, off he goes, finishes third, great. Koki was a pretty good downhill skier, and he'd tuck and everything. After the race, the Russian, Russians, I gotten along with the Russians for a long time, you know, and uh, they, they were always good to us. I've never any problem with Russian. They came in to me and said, Chon, Chon, do you have any, what you use for glide wax for Koki? He's very fast skis. And I said, oh, fall line blue. Never heard of it. 
And he said, do you have any? And I said, well, just a minute. So I went through the dorm. I went to the guys. Hey, you guys, got any little fall eye blue? Give me some pieces of fall eye blue. So I got a bunch of fall eye blue and went and gave it to the Russians. See, I didn't tell them Koki had about a five-inch <laughs> kick pocket, and that's why his skis were so bloody fast. But I said, here you go. And uh, I don't know if they had luck with it after that or not. If they didn't, they probably thought I was hoodwinking them. But I wasn't. We was... We use fall we line fall blue. Line blue. <laughs> now, what the hell are these tints? Oh, that's great. Swix. Red. You want clister? You got it. There's it. Swix red clister? Oh, sure. Sure. Now, you know, you just... Oh, I remember. Wait, you did my skis once for the Washington's birthday race. Sure, with probably stuff. painted you on. You put it on your wood stove. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and silver. Red and silver you had. Little paintbrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. Long lasting. <laughs> <laughs> that lasts you for a couple days. <laughs> a couple days. <laughs> You only got a Rex Clister tent. Oh yeah, they copied. You know, Rex spent most of the time copying the scent. That's red. Put, yeah, but that's so still good. All right. Rex Red Clister, I think, is the best red. Oh, it used to be. It's that, lean. That, it's really fast. It yeah, gets it, good in new snow. I don't yeah, know about coarse snow. Is yeah, it all it's good. Coarse? No, Rex Red is, is very good. Okay. The Rotosilver. Rotosilver. Like Rotosilver is really well, good. Yeah, uh, we used to race once in a while. We'd use that to uh, on power snow, hard icy tracks before a grueling. Now here, ah, oh, this stuff is magic. My ski coach, Prager, back at Dartmouth, uh, put me onto this. This is, is some kind of paraffin with bronze or something into it. There, see? And uh, for wet snow, corn snow, stuff like this, glide wax. He was in the, I don't know if it was Parsen Derby or some big race in Switzerland once, and he rubbed this on, did well, won the race or something. So. He, he put me on this. This is this is dynamite. It used to be dynamite. This uh, I wouldn't give this up. This is fantastic <laughs> stuff. Hold said, on to it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who Ski made it. Ski spree, huh? Yeah. Well, the Swiss, they used to put metals in, in there, yep. uh, in, in all the waxes. So that, this has some bronze in it, I think. Bronze, so, high-speed wax, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Is that you know they're getting back into metals, all these uh, Are they? Yeah. soft metals. Yeah. Yeah. We got some home coal. Oh yeah, there. that's good. Home and coal. We used to use that a lot in, in alpine races. <clears throat> and I think that's a mixer too, the white. Yep. You mix it with uh, home and coal blue is, is fantastic. Now there, now there's a good wax, X Elite. Oh, fantastic. I learned about this in Australia. This is good for kind of moist powder snow. Yep. It's the best moist powder snow wax I've ever had. X leaf red. Really? Oh yeah, a absolutely. Wow. That's just amazing. You better keep that one then. Yeah, yeah. We uh, used that at the Nationals once at Waterville, I remember. I think, I don't know what year it was, but we were up there and they went up the hill and around and around. And I'd been to Australia a couple of times, so I I wasn't a U.S. coach, but I was waxing guys like Dunkley and Tim and people like that. Yeah. Put this on. Yeah, the Swix, the Rota binder was faster. The Swix, the Rex was the best. Yeah. I didn't have much use for the Swix binder. You have plenty of Monta Ranta. Jeez. I'll take some of that. That's okay. Good. Go ahead. Might be too fast for a young guy like you. There's <laughs> oh, holy shit. What's that? These, these uh, Sandvik abraders. Abraders, yeah. That was the first attempt at roughing up the... Yeah, Sandvik. Oh, that's not a, a scraper. It's just no, no, no. Yeah. It's an abrader. Yeah, it's for, right. making, for making Harry's. Mm -hmm. You can spare these? Sure. You are using oh, sure, They're right. brand new in the package. Oh, sure. Looks like 20 kroners. Here, I'll show you. Oh, I'll show you something that's interesting. Well, I'd buy kits and make that wine, but here's some cider, hard cider, that Bill Darrell, the owner of the apple orchard, and I made. 1955. So it's 45. This is almost 60 years old. Is it still it's, good? It's very bitter. No, but we, uh, <laughs> we make Calvados out of it. Okay. I have a friend who has a still, and you know, you distill that and you have Calvados. <laughs> it's not for publication. <laughs> I think it's maybe illegal, but uh, there you go. That's excellent. Yeah. 